glory and honor be unto your name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's have our seat in the presence of God. I want to appreciate you once again. Those of you who have joined us online, the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, we are praying there will be no third wave of coronavirus here. Very soon, very soon, we shall all be free to live our lives the way God wants us to live in the name of Jesus Christ. This restriction has taught us a lot of lessons. Amen. And uh, we are going to take that lesson forward. And we are going to make sure that, you know, we continue to serve God, whatever the weather. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I just want to key into... The, 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 the moment that we have in the house of a child dedication to minister to us, something that God has put in my spirit. I know it's Palm Sunday, and many of us were spread as traditionally as we would go to church on a day like this, and uh, you know, we we'll read about Jesus, you know, going to sending his disciples to the village opposite. Amen? And uh, he said to them, you will see a donkey and a colt that's tied and lose them. And if anyone says, why are you losing them? Just tell them the Lord has need of them. Amen. There are stories we have heard over and over again. They are very important. Don't get me wrong. They are very, very important. Hallelujah. Because God still has need of many of us. And some are tied. Hello? Let's go to Matthew, Matthew 21. You can read it from Matthew 21 or Mark 11. Matthew 21. Let's look at Matthew 21. Uh, when they drew near Jerusalem, came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples. Quickly, verse 2. And he said, saying to them, go into the village opposite to you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Lose them and bring them to me. Verse 3 says, And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. Verse, verse 4. Let's be quick. We are going to 11. And this was done that it might be fulfilled. This one needs to be underlined. Um, it was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, mm -hmm, Quickly. Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you. Hello? The king is coming. He came the first time. It was announced before to tell them that he was coming. And he went. Now he's announcing to us that he is coming again. Maybe I should dwell briefly on that. At the time, he, he had to ride on a donkey as a sign of peace, to go into Jerusalem. That was his first coming. His second coming, he will ride a horse. Hey! Horse is, a, is for battle. It's for war. The first coming, he was on a donkey. I gave him peace. Oh. But when he appears again in the cloud, Go and read Revelation 19. There is no such time to go through them now. With his sword in his mouth. Hallelujah. With the host of heaven all around him, all on horses, coming to do battle. He will meet us well. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. So it was written that, you know, tell daughters of Zion, behold, your, your king is coming to you. That's why our Easter conference is important. The king is coming. He's coming. Hallelujah. Lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, a foal of a donkey. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to help us. And he did fulfill that scripture. Listen to me. Everything that has been written will, be, will come to pass. We can't do anything about it. That's why you cannot join them to, to, to say, oh, this, this cannot be true. When I read philosophy, I read psychology, I did all this, how can this be true? Glory be to Jesus. Jesus is coming back. 
is coming back. You can't stop him. The only thing is that it looks he has gone for too long. But a thousand days, a thousand years before the Lord, just like a day gone. Verse 6, quickly. Um, so the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. That's another lesson. Whatever he asks us to do, let's do. Hello? Don't do, if I come from right now and say, go to that house there. You see that new car? No. Bring it here. If the owner asks you, why are you taking my car? Pastor James has need of them. <laughs> Say, this man is not hearing from God. <laughs> Pastor, the law has changed. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. He caused, he caused things that were not as though they be. I won't ask you to go and bring another man's car. But there are things we need in the spirit which we can call forth with the authority that he has given us. Yeah, we can call them forth. And they come to fulfillment. Hallelujah. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. They that love it, we eat his fruit thereof. Glory be to Jesus. Uh, Jesus commanded them. and we, The commandment is given us now is to love one another. The commandment is given us now is to follow him. Is to preach the gospel. Hallelujah, somebody. Hello, we Grant us the grace to obey him in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 7, quickly. Let's just deal with that once we started. They brought the donkey and the coat and lay close on them and set him on them and go on, go on, eat quickly. And uh, very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches of the trees and spread them on the road. Hmm? Yes, verse 9. And then the multitude went before, and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh. He that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed is he that cometh. He that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he that cometh, he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed is he that cometh, he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And they were singing. God will give you cause to sing all the days of your life. Verse and when he had come into Jerusalem, the city was moved, saying, who is this? It was moved. There was excitement. Everybody followed. Ah, his second coming will not be like that too. <laughs> As I was saying, ah, Jesus, I thought it would be next year. That would not be our portion. May you and I be excited. In the name of Jesus Christ. But one thing happened, the other, the scripture was fulfilled. Let's take the scripture seriously. One thing also was that before they got to this point, many followed him on that day to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Many followed him. But we always read about one man that, that received a miracle. The blind baptism. He knew Jesus would never pass that way again. So as Jesus was going, he was crying. Son of David, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. And the Lord healed him. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. But before Jesus got to this point, that's where I'm going. Before Jesus got to the point that he made this triumphal entry into Jerusalem, he was a child. He was born a baby. Remember the story about the manger. Jesus didn't jump down from heaven as God. He was conceived 
by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Spirit. He was carried in a mother's womb. And, 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 and on the day of delivery, everything went wrong, but Christ made it. That's the story of every one of us to this moment. God used that as an example. That everyone that will achieve greatness on earth, everyone that's been born, that, that succeeded and will still succeed, must first be a baby. Must be a child. Hallelujah. Or how we raise, how we were raised and how we raise those children will determine what they become. Do you agree with me? Well, the interplay of the environment cannot be underestimated. Hallelujah. But we have roles to play in nurturing young ones to fulfilling purpose. What Jesus was doing, get the message, is that he was going to fulfill his mission. He was going to Jerusalem. He, was, he knew why he came. He was going there to be a sacrificial lamb. And he went gladly. Glory be to Jesus. He was first a child. He was first a child, and he grew up as a child. At the age of 12, in, in Luke chapter 2, at the age of 12, if you read verse, verse 41 to 43, you will see there, he, he followed his parents to, to that festival. In this same Jerusalem, every year they went for that feast. It was 12 when they went to Jerusalem according to the custom. And when they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus, I love the scripture. Say boy Jesus. He was once a boy. The boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother did not know it. If it were to be Nigeria of today, they would kidnap him. Hello? You know the story? They went three days' journey ahead. Hallelujah. And they did not find him. He said, ah, where is this boy? With all the prophecies that they had. It should have been in their pocket. But they were careless. So we can't be careless about our children. Are you with me? But when they came back, they found him among the teachers in the church. He was listening and asking questions. So Jesus had all to do to get to where he got to in life. Get the message. Jesus was God that was sent to us from heaven, but he had still to walk to get to where God wanted him to get to. So it doesn't happen by accident. It doesn't happen by just prophecy. Hallelujah. It doesn't happen by folding our hands and doing nothing. It happens by following the example, the rules, obeying the scriptures, working hard as God leads us. And to us parents, it happens by nurturing them. Our world had produced people like Adolf Hitler. They will never see such again. He was raised by somebody. Isn't it? Our world has produced a man called Osama Bin Laden. May we never see such again. But many of them are in the making. That's the truth. Amen. A teacher showed a, a cartoon of uh, Muhammad in Yorkshire last week. We can't sleep since then. The man is going into hiding. Anybody that... Uh, that shows the picture of uh, uh, Muhammad must be dealt with. Hallelujah. That's, that's their theory. Glory be to Jesus. The 7-7 bomber, the 9-11 bomber, they were raised by, by human beings, by parents. Let's be careful how we raise our children. Glory be to Jesus. They will not depart. From the presence of the Lord. From the way of the Lord. The Lord will give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to raise them in the way of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Hallelujah. 
You see that scripture? It said, train up a child the way he wants to. Is that what you are reading there? The way he wants to be raised. Aha. Because that's what we parents are doing. I've said to us in this church before, let's be careful not to raise, to raise man boys. Man boys. Man boys. Don't raise a man boy for God. Ah, the Lord will help us. Hi. Thank you, Father. A man child. There are many of them out there today. May God help us. How do we avoid raising a man child or a man boy? Is to train up a child in the way he should, not the way he wants. The way he should. And when he is what? Old, he will not depart from it. The parents of today have spoken to you, Brad Gwenja. Can you you are hearing me? But I'm talking to all parents and grandparents in the house. When they bring grandchild to you, don't let them walk with their head. They have to walk with their leg. Because some of them they can turn upside down and start walking. If they perfect it, you'll just see them outside one day. They are very adventurous. Hello? I phoned a mother last week. And uh, I had the cry of a baby behind and I was and I was saying, what's wrong with her? One year old, three months. What's wrong with her? Why is she crying? I turned to her. I said, I know that she was playing with the phone when it rang. I took it to answer the call. That's why we are having protest. I said, one year old. Ah, God have mercy. Anyway, my father didn't have a phone, though. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Are you with me? We are in a dangerous time. Don't be too permissive. Don't indulge children. Don't let them grow anyhow. Amen? Ah. If you go down this scripture, is, there, is it verse 19 of it? Check, check that verse for me. Go to 17. Hallelujah. There's a verse in it which brought controversy some years ago in this same scripture. 15. Try 15 for me. What does it say? Aha, it's 15. Young people, you have to agree with me by fire by force. <laughs> Foolishness is bound up in the heart of who? A child. Our people say, oh, come on, they knew we read this. The rod of correction, not of abuse, is the rod of correction that will drive it far from you. Many, we live in a generation where we are forced to spear the rod. And what we are doing is spoiling the child. There are many ways you can correct a child without using force and using, Amen. Sometimes it boils over. Glory be to Jesus. Let me tell you something. I read a piece. Ah, let me see if I can find it. I read a piece that touched me. I don't like to use Dubai as an example. But you know what? The, the, the prince, there was an interview by the BBC uh, with the prince of... Uh, with the founder of Dubai, Sheikh uh, Maktoum, whatever. And they said, what, what, what was the future of Dubai, of the United Arab Emirates? You know what he said? He said, my father was on a camel. I'm in a, I'm in a Mercedes. My son is on a Land Rover. My grandson is going to be from Land Rover. But my great-grandson will be back on a camel. They said, what does that mean? He said, tough times create strong men. Tough times create who? Strong men. 
Strong men create easy times. Easy times create weak men. Weak men create tough times. We see in that cycle, it got me thinking. Tough times create strong men who find, look for solution to every problem in their time. That's why we have electricity. That's why we have heating. In fact, that's why we have the mobile phone. People who are looking to solve their problem. Amen? How many times were the, 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 the British, the, 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 the Portuguese, when they were going to Africa, how many times were they shipwrecked before they perfected the cruise liner? Amen. The tough time, necessity was the mother of invention. Look at Jesus riding colt, riding donkey. If I give you one now, you say, Pastor, I, take it. I don't like it. I'd rather go to Mercedes. But the, issue, the problem is this. Strong men have created easy times. You know what the easy time is doing? It's creating weak men. Our boys will not be weak men. Our girls will not be weak women. When life is too easy, the ambition is dead, is killed. There's nothing to aspire for, to. When children have it too easy, they don't aspire to do anything in life. Be careful. Oh, I suffered. My children will not suffer. Hey, you might be heaping up the problem for tomorrow. Let them go through it. I consciously create little hardship for this ones. I consciously did. Amen? Because I look, my mother will always tell me, my the children of the mighty, where are they? They are the weak ones. We are not the products of rich men and, and rich women. We are products of market women. Who are on their knees praying and teaching us in the way of the Lord. Because we have got degrees and we are now abroad, we let children dictate how we raise them. You are making a big mistake. Key into the revelation of today. This boy we have dedicated with was great. So you have got to train him and teach him and all the children in the house in the way of the Lord. You know, we love giving Bible names to our children. James, John, Peter, hallelujah. We also need to teach them the Bible. So that we don't find those names in prison. Oh, yeah. If you, you can give a Bible name to Emmanuel. If I don't teach him the way of the Lord, where you see that name, you won't like it. That's the truth. Please, whether you work 24 hours or you work 18 hours, devote time to raise your children in the way of the Lord. But if you yourself, you are not there, uh, children learn what they, they live what they learn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, many won't understand that easy times create weak men. And those weak men will now eventually create tough times again. And that's why he said his great-grandson will be back on the camera. Because <laughs> in the way life is so easy, they are, they are not doing anything. I look at the lockdown. Glory be to Jesus. I know what God said to me this morning. Ah, when the king comes again, hallelujah, it shall be an international lockdown. <laughs> what you have seen is only national lockdown. When the king appears, nobody goes anywhere. Shall be an international lockdown. No, this last lockdown, there were people who were enjoying themselves on the, in the cruise liner. On the cruise liner, they were going from Caribbean to wherever the COVID struck. And then they wanted to, to dock at an island and say, oh, hang on, <laughs> you can't come here. <laughs> How many of us remember? <laughs> You can't come here. We are sorry. They went to another place and said, ah, we don't have facilities for you. I think uh, that was one of the few legacies of Donald Trump. 
I think he allowed them to come to America. Amen? <laughs> Imagine rapture happening when you're on that cruise liner. Or you're in the air. And the pilot is raptured. Ah, come on. Ah, pastor, which one are you talking about? <laughs> Amen? Or you are in your car with your wife and the children, and then you are driving, you are driving, may God forbid, and your husband is raptured, and you are an M20. Before you cross over to the other side, glory be to Jesus. Say, God, don't let that happen to me. Where he's going, we are going together. Hallelujah, somebody. Let me just bring this up in the short time that we have. There are many ways we can raise our children spiritually. If you go to Psalm 127 for me, very powerful scripture um, that we have used over time. Unless the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. We've got ourselves to surrender to God to help us to build. You can't rely on your wisdom, your knowledge. Hallelujah. On your understanding, we've got to. That's why we need to bring the children to the Lord, dedicate them, hand them over. When they are going home now, I'll say, ah, Are you taking him again? <laughs> when Hannah dedicated Samuel, he left Samuel at the altar, isn't it? But I bet you they wouldn't leave him here. They will take him back home. It's my son. Whatever you have given to the Lord is the Lord's. So when pastors say, oh, I need those children, they say, ah, they've got a biology test tomorrow. You know, there are four different types, ty types of uh, quotient. Amen? Intelligence quotient. How many of you have heard about that? You all have it. Have great IQ. Shout to the Lord. Let me hear you. It's the measure of your level of comprehension. That's intelligence quotient. Every one of us know that. That's what we use to memorize, to solve math problem, recall lessons, pass exams, and all that. You will never be short of it. Our children will never be short of it. But that's what we call emotional quotient. EQ. Say EQ. That one is the measure of your ability to maintain peace with others. Keep to time. Be responsible. Be honest. Respect boundaries. Be humble, genuine, and considerate. Every child needs that. The emotional quotient. Hallelujah. When you train a child to, 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 to have a degree in biology, in mathematics, in become a doctor, and they don't have a good EQ, they will suffer. Pay attention to that. And when you do that, You've got to do it with the scriptures. The social quotient, the measure of your ability to build a network of friends and maintain it over a long period of time. Some people cannot have a friend in the morning till night. And they are loners. In this lockdown, many suffered. People that have a higher EQ, that is emotional quotient and the, and the social quotient, they tend to go far in life than those with high IQ alone. Are you with me? Most schools, most parents, all of us today, we concentrate only on improving the IQ, not the EQ and the SQ, which we play down. We have to take all of them on board. Our children must be social. Their emotional health is more important. And you can use the Bible to raise them. You can use all manner of, you know, examples in the scriptures. People who have been through tough times. Amen? Do you know that a man with a high IQ, like Pastor Godson, will end up being employed by a man with high EQ and SQ. And you'll be complaining to Pastor, they have not increased my salary. And those ones that employed him, their IQ is average. So it's not how really high intelligent you are. 
that determine your success in the labor market. If you can't fit into a group at work, they will show you the way out. Hello? That's why we have many successful men out there today who can fit anywhere. When we raise the children, the emphasis is not only on Kumon. Amen. 11 plus. It's not only. Emotional quotient, the social quotient, let's put all together and make sure that they can make friends. They can communicate. You know what? Very, very important. The fourth one, which is very, very important, is adversity quotient. That one is really, really important. It's the measure of your ability to go through a rough patch in life and come out without losing your mind. Hello? Hey, adversity quotient. That's why I said when you make the role too easy for them, many of them are not raised like that. They run from cockroach. They run from mosquito. Amen? They run from flies. <laughs> Hallelujah. But there are witches and wizards too. <laughs> Who can suck blood without, without injection, without syringe. Uh -huh. But they are running for, from, from rat. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Ah, my son saw a dead cockroach. He will not go into that bathroom. I said, he's dead. He came to want to sleep in our room. I said, no, you can't sleep in my room. He's dead already. Even with the dead one, he will still not go in that place. While in our own days, you'll be struggling with your bread from the rats. You will be trying to take it to me. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> Amen. You may not have gone through that, but that's what made us. The patch that they have eaten, you take that off, take it out. You settle down with it. Hallelujah. Look at the expiry date. That's why, why are you not having breakfast? The bread has expired. When? This morning. Ah. <laughs> this morning. Amen. Ah. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Gary doesn't have expiry dates. No. And we survived. <laughs> Our God is faithful. Please, 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 don't prepare the road for your children. Prepare the children for the road. The challenges that are coming in our world, the way these children are growing, I have concerns that many things is at stake. In our old age, we will not sorrow over them. In the name of Jesus Christ. When faced with Troubles, those with lesser AQ we give up. They don't like stress because we haven't put them through it. They will abandon their family. Old people, some they're already warning you. Some of them are already warning us. Dad, <laughs> mom, when you are old. I'll just take you to a home. Hallelujah. They will pay. Amen. But we need more than that. We need a cuddle. But it's the, how you raise them now. Many who have a low adversity quotient, the first thing they think about is suicide. Because they can't go through that trouble. May the Lord spare our children. You see, we have a big work to do. And as God will have it. For somebody raised Jesus. While we're celebrating him today, he was a child that was raised also. 
Because he was studying the Bible, he didn't have time to go to school. That's why he became a carpenter. But he still fulfilled purpose. He still fulfilled purpose. Apostle Paul that came to work for him later, Luke that followed him, they were qualified professionals. As I said last week, a physician, a solicitor, a lawyer. Amen? The Lord will help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Develop their IQ. That's important. As well as their EQ. Their SQ and their AQ. They should become multifaceted human beings. Able to do things independently of their parents. Stop following them everywhere. Ah! I st- I, when I go to Nigeria, I see a boy like James. They will put his backpack on his back. He will follow his, his friend. They are going to nursery. The parents are standing there doing like this. They are still taking 15 years old to school. Hallelujah. I showed a picture. I showed a video to Mr. Blessed in the course of the week. A boy turned up in class. Some of you might, might have seen it. And the teacher was... How many clothes have you got on? He took on the first one. We counted seven or eight. Eight clothes. Put on eight clothes. Uh, Pastor Gossin, you saw it too. I sent it to you. That's what we, how we used to dress in those days. When we go to class. Because of the cane. You pad up. I know some teachers are wise. When they put you pad, they hear, pad, ah, they say, how many have you got? Take it off. We didn't die. We survived. And we are better people. To the glory of God. Wave your hand to Jesus. Thank you, Father. We have so much responsibility to raise and nurture our children and train them up in the way of the Lord. While we are paying attention to their academics, their IQ, we are paying attention to their emotional states, to their social coaching and how they make friends, how they sustain that friendship, and to their adversity cushion. Hallelujah. Ah, in the days when, when hunger was a punishment, Glory be to Jesus. You break a plate. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. There is no food for you. You learn to fast. By fire, by force. That's why it's easier. Tell the children to fast now. They will even go open the cupboard. There is no food to eat. What's that? Conflicts. What's that? Cocoa pop. What's that? Oats. What? And there is no food in the house. No food in the house. I used to tell my son, many of us grew up, Gary was the only city we knew. Hello? And delightfully, God sustained us. Verse 2, quickly, as we round up. Hallelujah. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for he gives his beloved sleep. He gives his beloved sleep. If you are not sleeping, please, let it be for the right reason. Vigil. Vigil. Last, year, last night, Bratala was educating us in, 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 um, in, in, in uh, leader's prayer, in worker's prayer, from Acts chapter 12. Peter was bound, chained in the leg, in the hand. Soldiers were guarding him. He was in prison. Waiting to be killed by Herod. He was still sleeping. (laughs) He was still sleeping. Because God gave him peace. Ah, I follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. See where I am. Some people will not sleep. Even when the sleep is catching them. They will open their eyes like this. In chains. Guarded in prison. He fell asleep. When the angel of the Lord came, he said, ah, this guy, you are asleep. Wake up. <laughs> it's time to go. He giveth his beloved sleep. If you are not sleeping, let it be for the right reason. Don't be awake on social media all night. 
Young people, don't let social media kill you, your destiny. 12 o'clock, they are hiding under their bed, under their pillow. When you finish your Facebook, you go on Instagram. When you finish Instagram, you go on Twitter. When you finish Twitter, ah, I told the man one day, I said, look, this guy is making millions somewhere. You have not started anything. I said, Michael Rashford is earning how many, 300,000 a week. You are, you are waiting to watch him. I'm paying to watch him. And then you are leaving your work undone. Oh, it's madness. Oh, let's, let's tell them the truth. You have to work hard so that you can be, you can be paid to be washed. People can follow you on Instagram. They can follow you everywhere. When you yourself have become successful, there's a time for everything. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And maybe some of you don't look at this thing spiritually. Let me tell you, please, in five minutes we'll be done. Spiritually, every child born on earth has enemies. In the spirit and enemies in the physical. Serious enemies. Because every child born is a potential deliverer of his people. Moses of his people. Joshua of his people. Gideon of his people. Daniel of his people. And the enemy does not want that to happen. So the moment a child is born, especially to us that profess Jesus, that profess to be Christian, immediately that child has an enemy. And the enemy is working to alter their destiny. Many years ago, one of the most respected musicians in my country sang a song. I was listening, listening to it. Even this morning. It came up in my spirit. The day you have a child, that child has enemies. When he starts to crawl and it touches your bag, what today? Kadani Lonjenu, Oti Bere Otani, Oti Bossa Waye. That's the stage. Look at Unique running everywhere. Push this one down, push that one down. If, he, if she accidentally spills your stuff, ah, you gnash your teeth as if you smile. Inside of you. <laughs> That's the truth. Hallelujah, somebody. That's why that child needs to be raised. In the way of the Lord, fortified with prayer. That musician said, when he starts to play with friends, with social cushions, and the father you know, buys him a bicycle, and his friends say, Come, let's play with your bicycle. Oh, you all know it. <laughs> Let me interpret. If he's, what, he wants to play with his bicycle outside, eh? Kwame wants to play with his bicycle outside. Man, I say, Let me ride. I say, Oh, no, no, no. Don't ride myself. Okay, take your back and go. I'm not playing with you again. Enemy, enmity has started. And you all have money. You buy bikes for them, isn't it? They don't pay attention. When he starts school, Hallelujah. And he's concentrating. He's sitting down. That's it. When they write exam and it comes first, the other ones that uh, are behind, that's why they don't use position in this country. Remember I told you, my friend, when we get our results in those days, say, if you come near my house, you are dead. If, he, if he's always forced, as our children will always be, those who always come last, they give him a name. It's the teacher's favorite. You too can become a teacher's favorite. All you need to do is to bury your head in your book. Look at how he's growing. He goes, he finishes school, he got, he got a job. 
They say, uh, we start to work here at 8 o'clock. It's punctual. It's working hard. Some people in the place who are lazy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The colleagues at work, they say, ah, it's the manager's favorite. Enmity has started. That's still that child is growing. And when they go for a cup of tea outside, she's coming. Up. <laughs> manager's favorite. Enmity. But a child that's got social quotient will be able to deal with them. With emotional cushion, stable, will not be disturbed. With adversity, you know, I've been racially abused in places where I work. I used to tell my wife, someday I will get home like this. She said, what happened? I said, some people are abusing me today, but my money, the hour, I was counting the hours. <laughs> I was counting the, at the end of the day, I said, ah, thank you. Another 80 pounds is here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for adversity, cushion. Hello? That guy growing up is growing up every stage of his life with enemies. Those who are making themselves enemies. Hallelujah. He had, the guy that works hard needs a time of relaxation. Let's go to Nando's. My brother will say, I'll get out with my friends. I say, where? A name I can't pronounce. They'll go to somewhere. Chikwitu. They'll go to, <laughs> they'll go to Nando's. They'll go to Amen. Uh, uh, which one? Magamama, what do you call it? Waga. Thank God for grace. Hallelujah. Baba ni kilomu, baba ni coca cola. Aniko ma ye je, je di je di. You know what? They say, ah, they go out with friends. They say, ah, what do you want to drink? They say, oh, coke. They say, ah, you know, sir, you don't know how to enjoy life. Pile. Hmm? What do you call it? We key. Remember, I lost my first salvation because of that. Some of you will remember. A friend was doing the ceremony when I first got born again the first time. I went there, they were singing for me. I took my life back. <laughs> One bottle of stout. Amen. <laughs> ah, God is so faithful. That guy had progression. If he is the type that loves to drink, Hallelujah. They will still give him name. All his money is spent on, on drinks, on alcohol. There's nothing you do. That child has enemies. If it's the one that loves women, that dress well, hallelujah, they will say he's proud. Hallelujah. They will say he's proud. They, they will give him name. Whatever. And if it's the patient one, that doesn't like drink, that doesn't like uh, um, women, that doesn't like it, they will say, ah, ala kori akadan shelo roju koi koi. That one is serious. They say, you are too serious. Eh, akada, you have degree, you have everything, just come to work, sit down. No, you don't, don't associate with anybody, no drinking, you don't come for coffee, you don't come for cigarette, don't come for anything. They will still give you name. Let's prepare the children with all the cues they need to survive in this world. Adversity doesn't kill. Tough times don't last. Only tough people do. Let's rise to our feet. Oh, hallelujah. Just wave your hand to him and just bless him. Just wave your hand to him and bless him. Just bless him. Bless him as we go. Raposo katara Thank you, Father. Train up a child. In the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Children, also, please cooperate with your children, with your mothers, with your fathers. Cooperate with your siblings to be raised in the way you should go. Not the way you want to go. Some people had a meeting in my house someday. They said, ah, we need a, we need a dishwasher in this house. I said, how many hands have you got? I said, two. You, how many have you got? Two. How many have you got? We got six hands. 
Amen. And then you still need a dishwasher. Hallelujah. But what they don't know is that in another house in the church, the parents have reported to me, they have big dishwasher to put dish in the washer. Now, wahala. When the dishwasher has finished washing, to take them out, now trouble. Hey! Hey! Our cries is, Lord, have mercy and help us to raise our children. That's all we are crying for this hour. Just go to him in prayer. Have mercy on us and help us to raise our children. We don't want to raise man boys. We don't want to raise a man child. Those who will not be able to cope with challenges of life. Those who will give up at every moment. Ah, Jesus was raised and he succeeded. Our children are being raised. They will succeed. They will succeed. They will make it. In the name of Jesus Christ. They will fulfill purpose. They will fulfill destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, where we have failed already, we ask for your mercy. We ask for restoration. In the name of Jesus. Every child under the echo of my voice, receive grace. To be what the Lord has made you to be. You will not be disadvantaged. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. Wherever there is a deficiency, as I speak, wherever anything has gone wrong, in the area that we have touched, concerning any child, my Father and my God, we reverse that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Oh, glory and honor be unto you. Let's end rejoicing. Let's end rejoicing. Just rejoice in your spirit. Just rejoice in your spirit. We would not have had an opportunity to dedicate James if coronavirus had taken him. Let's just re end in rejoicing. Oh, Ramashaka Taraba. Lebroka Taraba Seket. Oh, thank you, Father. All my days, you have been faithful.